Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. This week, we'll learn how universities throughout the state system promote diversity understanding through programs and activities for the students. But first, we'll hear from Victoria Sanders, Assistant Vice Chancellor, Chief EEEO Compliance Officer, and Title IX Coordinator with the state system, and John Burnett, Special Assistant to the President and Title IX Coordinator at California University of Pennsylvania. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan. Chancellor of Pennsylvania's State System of Higher Education. And welcome to another installment of Infinite Opportunities. This is our opportunity as a system to talk to you about the 14 publicly funded state universities that make up our system and the incredible contributions that those institutions and the graduates from those institutions make to the Commonwealth each and every day. We're very fortunate today to have two representatives of our system here with us during this segment to talk about an issue that is of such importance, not only to our system of higher education, but higher education across the country, and that's the topic of diversity. With us today, we have Dr. Victoria Sanders, who is the Assistant Vice Chancellor, Chief Education and Employment Equal Opportunity Compliance Officer for the state system, of uh, higher education in Pennsylvania, as well as Dr. John Burnett. Dr. Burnett is the special assistant to the president of California University of Pennsylvania and handles the issues of education and employment, equal opportunity, and he is also the Title IX coordinator, as is uh, Dr. Sanders. We're delighted to have both of you with us today. Thanks for joining us and providing us with what I know will be important information on this very important topic. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm going to launch right into uh, some of the topics that we need to discuss because, of course, our time is short. Uh, we have the issue of diversity. Uh, it is amazing, and I've always believed this. If you have 10 people in a room and you ask each of them individually to write down on a piece of paper their definition of diversity, you would probably end up with 10 different definitions. So I thought for our viewers it might be important to first and foremost talk about what is diversity? How do we organize around it? And Dr. Sanders, why don't we start with you? Can you, can you tease out the idea of diversity a little bit for our viewers? Sure, certainly. I'll, I'll try. And I agree with you. Um, with, uh, people have multiple definitions for diversity. But basically, diversity is difference. And when we're talking about diversity, we're talking about individual diversity as well as social group diversity. Individual diversity refers to things like personality life experience, how you approach uh, situations and problems based on those life experience experiences. When we talk about social group diversity, we're really talking about things like age, uh, veteran status, disability status, uh, race, gender, sex, um, country of origin. All of those things uh, really make up what we mean when we say diversity. So it's really the, the differences amongst us. Good answer, and, and again, takes it away from that stereotype that we're only talking about a few issues which create diversity. I, I have been a long believer that no two people are exactly the same, and by virtue of that fact, no matter their color or their gender or their point of origin, they are diverse just because they are inherently different. But dealing with diversity is a very important issue and something that just doesn't happen naturally. It really is important for higher education to tackle the issue of diversity and make sure that the, the, the environment, which is so full of that diversity, is channeled in an appropriate and positive way for our students. Dr. Burnett, uh, tell us your take on just the general issue of diversity. Well, for myself personally, it's very broad. Uh, again, uh, going back to what Dr. Sanders says, it can be it's a variety of things that make up uh, the population that we're looking at. Again, it's, it could be race, ethnicity, age, disability, veteran status, uh, educational thought, religious belief, uh, regionalisms uh, as opposed to international uh, considerations. So diversity is very broad and it's something that's very important for our system and for our future. Well, thank you both. It's a fascinating take, and of course, with your experience, nobody better to ask about it. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, 
some of those uh, programs and activities in which we engage out there in the field at our 14 universities. Uh, Vicki, again, I'll start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the, the collaborations and the special opportunities that are being provided on the issue of diversity in our system? Certainly. And there are lots. Uh, there is a lot going on uh, in the state system, um, really trying to uh, bring inclusiveness to uh, these issues and get uh, groups of people involved. Um, one of the things that we do in the state system is we have a collaborative of all 14 of our state system universities that's called the Frederick Douglass Consortium. And it's a group primarily of faculty members who are, are working on issues um, that are reflective of the beliefs of Frederick Douglass. One of the, um, I think, main uh, areas that they focus on is really trying to mentor new faculty when they come into our system, particularly faculty from traditionally underrepresented populations. Uh, one of the other areas, and this really includes our students, is there is a debate society as part of the Frederick Douglass Institute. And that debate society really helps us to have an intersection between what's happening academically with uh, an extracurricular activity for our students. So those students become engaged in the art and the science of how to debate. Uh, there's a competition annually, and it's really uh, a wonderful experience uh, for our universities and for the students that we serve. No, interesting. And Dr. Burnett, you're on the ground at one of our universities while I work with Vicki at the system level. Uh, you want a chance to crow a little bit about some of the activities Absolutely. that unfold at California University? Yes, sir. Uh, California, we've had our FDI group there since 2003, and we have brought in 14 scholars uh, where we have retained some, but it's a win-win situation when we bring people in because, again, it gives them an entryway into the field, into the profession of working in higher ed. And we've been very fortunate that we have two uh, scholars that have stayed with us, and we have three in the pipeline that will, are still on as full-time uh, staff as well. So it's been very successful. Uh, we look at uh, that as part of our recruiting package for underrepresented uh, uh, faculty and staff as well. So we've been very uh, fortunate to uh, participate in that collaborative. Uh, we do go out and look for people to uh, get on the ground and come back to Pennsylvania. So uh, we've uh, attended conferences as well as we work collaboratively with the system. You know, uh, for the viewers who've watched this program before, they've heard me say that I come from somewhere else. I am not a native Pennsylvanian. Uh, I've been here almost three years, but I come from Florida. Florida is a massively diverse state, not only based on the size of the population, but the demographics of the population and what that brings to the table by way of, of diversity. Pennsylvania is not as diverse as Florida, based on sheer size, but talk a little bit about the demographics of not only Pennsylvania, but what you see on our university campus by way of changing demographics. And because you're on one of those campuses, Dr. Burnett, well, let's start with you. Sure. Uh, Pennsylvania does have diversity. Uh, you have to look for it. Uh, it's not necessarily in your racial, but definitely in our ethnic makeups. Uh, like I said, I'm in Western PA a subtle, you know, for mining and uh, steel industry uh, area of the state. So we have a lot of ethnic diversity there with uh, uh, people from different Eastern European countries and so forth. Uh, and we're seeing a change in the demographics. Of course, you know, they say by 2050 that the majority of our population will be minority population. So that's uh, coming about and we're seeing that on our college campuses and we want to be positioned to meet those needs. And so I'm very excited to be at our university where we have opportunities, not only for the people that are here, but also the emerging demographics that are coming about in our country. Another really interesting thing too is our campus is also uh, branching out worldwide. So we're also trying to invite more international students to our university. California University of Pennsylvania, our acting uh, interim president, Geraldine Jones, is very progressive and supportive of this uh, initiative and uh, what we do there for diversity for our campus. Dr. Sanders, you have uh, a global look at this mm -hmm. because you're with the system and responsible for working with each of those 14 compliance officers. What's your take on the general sense of demographic shift in Pennsylvania, but again, with an eye toward our 14 universities? Well, I think again, going back to the broadness of diversity, when we're talking about demographics and that shift, one of the uh, biggest shifts, I think, for the state system 
is the uh, adult population and that population uh, really wanting to engage with our universities, get uh, certificates, get degrees from our universities. And for the state system, some of our universities, that is new. And we are learning um, how to work with those adult populations, with more transfer students. Uh, another big area is our veterans. We have veterans who are returning to our uh, state system university. And our system is really, I think, doing a very, very good job. One of the things we have uh, is a veterans network, which again is another collaborative uh, that we have with all 14 universities. And that's being led uh, by um, Dr. Rhonda Lucky at uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania and James McCormick at Bloomsburg University. And all 14 are engaged. We have veteran centers on our campus and there's been research done and we're, what we're really trying to do is make it a welcoming environment, make it an equitable environment for those individuals. Um, certainly, you know, what John has mentioned uh, in terms of the changing demographics uh, in Pennsylvania, our campuses are spending a lot more recruiting students. Uh, it, it's, these, these are not free exercises, they require resources. And if we don't have the resources to really um, continue to do the great work that's going on at our universities, uh, there's concern that we really won't be able to meet the needs of the Commonwealth by responding to the diverse needs of the Commonwealth. Well, I know many of us believe um, the fact that uh, our entire country is becoming more diverse. And that's always been part of the strength of the United States is its diversity and people working and living together to create something incredibly uh, special. And our universities, if you will, are microcosms. I went to university, you went to university, and I know that two things happened to me while I was there. One, I was able to learn at the knee of some gifted, talented, professional uh, higher education educators to get me ready for the real world in which I was going to live. But because I went to a university, I also had occasion to rub elbows with people from all over the state, all over the country and all over the world. People from every walk of life, every socioeconomic group, every stripe. And that gave me the chance to better understand from that experience how to marry that with the talents that hopefully we all take away from a university and make it parlay into something special for the rest of our life. So I want to thank both of you for being with us today. Uh, there's much more we could talk about another time, I hope, and thanks for taking time away from uh, what you do to share a little bit of information uh, with the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania about the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. So, Dr. Vicki Sanders, Dr. Burnett, thank you so much for being with us. And thank you very much. Thank you for having me here today. It was a pleasure. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. In 1934, 22 people started a financial cooperative. PSECU was born out of necessity, out of a need to provide service to people who needed it most. Since 2000, we've been forging strong relationships with educational partners across Pennsylvania, making strategic investments that benefit all members, including students, faculty, and staff, and alumni at over 20 university and college locations across Pennsylvania. Learn more about what we offer students at PSECU.com students. Lock Haven University small class sizes, and the courses you need to achieve your dreams. The perfect environment to turn your passion into real success in the real world. Lock Haven University. We've got you covered. The Haven. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Cheney University to see how students take action to dispel stereotypes. What do you think are some of the stereotypes and biases of African-American women? Uh, they're too strong, too independent, and being loud, and being ghetto. Some of the issues that we are discussing as a group and as a campus is definitely the biases and the stereotypes against not only women, but specifically African-American women. I decided that my life, my label was something I had to be a part of because it it's breaking stereotypes, it's become, teaching the campus become become more aware of the language that we use. It was really kind of eye-opening to see like it's really that prevalent and that serious that 
they're still labeled even in the year 2015. There's a lot of self-esteem issues with women sometimes, especially on college campuses. And the My Life, My Label project, it gives the students the opportunity to be comfortable with who they are. The grant that we're working with is the Campus Action Grant, and it's designed to bring together groups of students to work on a specific project or topic that will help to improve the status of women in society. A project like My Life, My Label, absolutely is amazing for a freshman. We have a couple of freshman student leaders on our team who talked about that transition that they've made from kind of shy and kind of introvert to now they're leading the campus and they're leading the charge. To become a student leader, you have to become more involved, I think, like outside of the classroom. You join programs, you get into campaigns like My Life, My Label, and you take action, you take initiative, you, you move forward. I think it's very important um, for people to know that the opportunities that exist at Chan University for our students are varied and there are many. Opportunities are so immense here, like, it's almost like kind of hard not to be in something. At Cheney University, we have a dynamic group of students who are engaged across campus, both in the classroom, but also out the classroom. And the learning that they, they have in the classroom from faculty members absolutely transitions and translates to what they do outside of the classroom. When things go on on campus, everyone knows about it. So we have more campus support. Whereas if it was a bigger campus, not it, was, it would be a lot harder to get the word out. When we have these projects going on campus, it's easier for us to, you know, say, hey, there's a project going on. Why don't you come out to this event? Because, you know, you never know who it could affect. A specific project like My Life, My Label gives them the opportunity to be creative, to learn about leadership development, working in a team, um, working with different people from different perspectives, but also understanding that everybody has the same goal and everybody wants to be successful. There's a world that we have to deal with. We can deal with it together, and we should deal with it together. So I feel like men and women should come together here on campus and just offside campus too. Like once you leave Cheney, take what you learned here at Cheney and send it back to your community, your high school, be a student leader outside of Cheney. I really enjoy partnering with my professors on their research. It allows me to explore my field and prepare for my career. The impact I have on students goes beyond the classroom, mentoring, advising, and sometimes just listening. The faculty definitely have an open door policy. You can stop by to talk about classwork, your career, or just life. When Webpage FX is looking for technical talent, the first place we turn is Shippensburg University. Ship is teaching me how to learn and adapt. That's critical for success in this industry. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Mansfield University to find out how students and faculty share diversity while sharing a meal. It's, it feels like a family, yes. In my opinion, being here is like a dream. I think we have a very good atmosphere here in Mansfield in the international group. So my name is Solène, I'm from France and I've been here since August. My name is Luis Felipe Silva and uh, I've been in here for uh, two semesters. Hello, my name is Ping Yi Song, everyone here call me Leslie. Uh, I'm majoring in piano and music. Uh, it's my junior year here in Mansfield. This is the second Chinese uh, hot pot dinner we hold this semester and we have uh, like Indian dinner last semester and uh, food around the world. And uh, last time we did hot pot dinner, Chinese food is for Chinese New Year and this is the second time uh, we invited the president. It's a good campus, there's always things to do so we like to just eat together, have Chinese dinner together or it's just a great place to be. In my opinion, it's really interesting to know people from different countries. I think that Mansfield University has been my best choice. It's been a great school, uh, the music program where I am, beautiful campus, people. This is really good for me and it's, I would encourage to everyone who, that comes from another country to enroll as studies in Mansfield University.
Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to East Stroudsburg University to see how students come together to discuss race, ethnicity, and culture. Students want to talk about race, but they don't know how. Students want to talk about diversity, but they don't know where. So the Race Relations Projects bring students together in a neutral environment where they can talk about race, ethnicity, and culture. The Race Relations Project is an hour-long conversation, which is peer facilitated, and it's about eight to 15 students per session. It's a conversation and an opportunity to explore different cultural backgrounds and life experiences amongst students. The mission of the Race Relations Project is essentially to get students to talk about the kind of things that they find difficult to talk about. We make it a comfortable and safe environment. Um, everything that's said in the session is confidential and there's a, a non-judgmental um, zone. And it's really important because we know that it is a sensitive topic and we want everybody to feel comfortable. ESU is more diverse than ever. What the Race Relations Project does is it unlocks the educational value of diversity by allowing students to talk openly about it in a supporting environment. The conversations vary. Um, obviously we talk about race, but we also talk about things that fall under the umbrella of race relations, whether that's the definition of ethnicity, we talk about cultural appropriation, we talk about privilege, and we also talk about stereotypes and interracial dating. The Race Relations Project is based on the idea that if students can communicate openly and freely in an environment where they feel in control, that they'll be able to have genuine communication. What we hope that students will learn from the Race Relations Project is a kind of emotional growth, an appreciation to not just learn intellectually, but also to grow emotionally. Uh, I've noticed oftentimes that they are more confidently talking about race relations because they were given an opportunity where they were in the driver's seats and nobody told them how to think. Race relations is such a key part in today's society and regardless of what field you enter, you enter, you're always going to be working with different people, whether that's different ages, different ethnic backgrounds, diversity is so broad. We hope that students who've participated in the race relations projects become more civil, become more open, become able to communicate better. So we believe the race relations project is important for democracy and civility. was my first choice. My best choice. Because they have what I wanted to study. What I wanted to study. I love my major. I love the professors. It's so much more. So much more than a class. There's a tradition of success. Leadership. Community service. Helping me through my major and bringing about success for my future. Slippy Rock has shown me the world. The Rock prepared me for my job. Slippy Rock University. Experience the difference. I chose Bloomsburg because I liked how the class sizes were a lot smaller. I felt as if you'd get more of a real feel of accounting in the school. The program is known in the local region for just having the best program, the best teachers, and the most qualified staff. Just how great the professors have been really makes me think it was a great decision to come here. Bloomsburg University helps me to unleash. Helps me unleash my inner accountant. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Millersville University to discover how a special summer scholars program gives high school students from diverse backgrounds a head start to their collegiate career. The Millersville Scholars Program is founded in 2010 and it works to support students in their journey at Millersville University. So we work with students from across the state who are good candidates for success here at Millersville, but maybe they need some additional support. And our program takes them and works with them throughout their entire career at Millersville University. The Pre-Scholar Summer Institute, or PSSI for short, is a program for high school students who show a lot of potential, but may need some additional support to be successful. So if we look at students across the state, we put a special focus on areas like Philadelphia, Lancaster City, Harrisburg, York, um, and work to provide access for those students into the higher education world through Millersville University. Um, so we look for students who show high levels of resilience, leadership, uh, academic achievement, personal character, um, those kind of qualities that show that they could be successful in higher education. The Millersville Scholars Program has been a major influence 
in my career because it, it gave me the opportunity to come to college. And the Minnesota program has provided me with so many different network skills and um, professionalism and, and knowing how to um, connect with others and, and seek help, which is something that I wasn't good at either. Uh, and it's also provided me leadership skills. I've been able to work with the middle school program uh, for many years now. <laughs> and I've just grown so much as a person because of this program. The value of the Millersville Scholars Program is students get a chance to get a head start at Millersville University with a great education. They'll be able to have six credits in the summertime. They'll be able to get to know one another through the program. They'll meet faculty. They'll learn about programs. They'll have sessions where they can learn about themselves in the summer. During the academic year, they will have academic advisement throughout through their program, as well as uh, special counseling involved as well. One of the things that I really appreciate about the program is, is the staff that they, you know, they build together, you know, that they, they hire. Um, these individuals are not just there with you during these two weeks. Um, these individuals are with you throughout your collegiate career. Not all, not all four years, because some of them are seniors, sophomores, whatever they are, they are always there for you. So after the program, when you see these pairs and, and they see you walk on the campus, they talk to you and ask you how you're doing. And you know, this is a, a different outlet, another outlet to, you know, finding help. Um, having some type of mentorship and uh, that's the best thing about it and I wish all universities had something you know similar to the PSSI program I mean I really don't think it's anything like this It's very it's tailored to the students and it's tailored to success. Diversity is very important at Millersville and I think the, the university community administration as a whole really does value it highly. In our program you know we, we have a wide variety of students. We have a large population of African American and Latino students but we also have majority students as well which is important to create a community uh, of dialogue between all different backgrounds and ethnicities to really create a diverse community at Millersville. The Millersville Scholars Program really is about access and success. We work to provide access to students who maybe wouldn't have found their way to Millersville otherwise, and then we support those students through their success uh, to be graduates and community leaders in the future. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities, or visit us online 